Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promo rate for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Today on CityCast Boise, growth continues to be our big story, with more people moving to Boise and surrounding cities every year. But at the same time, low enrollment is forcing some public schools to close forever. So what's going on here? We're learning about this big generational shift happening right now with Idaho Statesman reporter Nick Rosenberger. He has intel on which parts of the valley are most popular for baby boomers and what our aging population could mean going forward. It's Thursday, June 6th. I'm Frankie Barnhill in for Lindsay Van Allen, and this is what Boise's talking about. The crux of the story is that population is booming in the Treasure Valley, but apparently that's not so true with schools and school enrollment. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. So it's a really good question. You know, back late last year, December 2023, uh, NAMPA decided to close four schools for a couple of different reasons. But one of the one of the main reasons was that they are seeing enrollment declines. And it's kind of this weird little thing. You know, you'd expect that as populations increase, school enrollments would also increase. Right. Um, but that's that's really not happening um, in in many school districts. So I decided to I decided to look into that and I spent, you know, a, a few months pulling records and, and looking into the data of things and, and chatting with school districts and finally got out with this piece. Yeah, I mean, it seems like I mean, the, what you wrote in the article is essentially that the median age of people in the Treasure Valley is going up, it's increasing, and it's increasing even faster than the national average, given that on the one side, not as many kids <laughs> um, in the Treasure Valley, either people aren't having kids or people with young families aren't moving to the Treasure Valley or even moving away. And then on the flip side, it's that it's become such an attractive place for perhaps even uh, most significantly like the boomer generation in their retirement to move to the Treasure Valley. Is that is that accurate what I'm seeing here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think kind of the, the, the craziest stat for, for this that I found was, you know, the, I, I think the median age um, in the United States grew about four years from 2000 to 2022, which is the most recent numbers we have available. Um, in a place like Eagle, which has seen pretty significant population growth, that w- number was actually 11 and a half years. So in, in Eagle, um, which falls within the, the West 80 School District, um, the median age rose 11 and a half years from about 35 years old to almost 47 years old. Wow. Wow. That is so interesting because, yeah, when you think about growth, you think about you just kind of assume it's going to happen across all demographics that like it's growing and we're seeing these new places and new amenities and things. And it's like, well, everybody can enjoy these. And there's there's different opportunities for different people, no matter what stage of life you're in. But when you really are drilling down, especially to specific neighborhoods or specific cities within the Treasure Valley, for example, Eagle probably being one that has aged quickly, aged the fastest. Um, so so if Eagle's getting older, does that mean that their schools are losing? I mean, where specifically is enrollment falling when we go back to the school side of this? Yeah. So the answer to that question kind of depends on if you're looking at things historically versus in the last couple of years since the, the COVID-19 pandemic in, in 2020. Um, so since 2020, school districts, including Boise, Nampa and Caldwell, um, have either seen like stagnant or declines. Um, so if you're, if you're looking at both historical and recent numbers, then you've got Boise, Nampa and Caldwell that have seen declines or, or stagnation um, in their enrollment numbers. If you're looking since the 2019-2020 school year, you can throw West Ada into that mix as well. Um, and then there's some other smaller school districts um, like Notus, Melba, and Parma um, in, in Canyon County that have also lost um, students since the COVID-19 pandemic. 
So I'm hearing these specific spots that are seeing these demographic changes and what that means for a valley that is just going through a lot of change. And I guess I wonder if we could step back for a second and, yeah, try to figure out the root of this. So we've already mentioned uh, that it's become a more attractive place to live in the Treasure Valley for people who are retiring. Uh, Why is that? What's going on there? Yeah, I I think for, you know, you have to look at migration trends a bit for this. For folks that live in pricier areas originally. Like out of state, like like Seattle or something. Yeah. if -hmm. you're living in Seattle, if you're living in Portland, or if you're living in San Francisco, Idaho's got ridiculously cheap real estate by those standards. You know, you can buy like a two or three bedroom home in California for like two or three million dollars. But in Eagle, for instance, you could get something way bigger, way more affordable, um, for a lower price. And so I think, I think that is one of the many reasons why, you know, older folks might be moving here in, in larger numbers. You know, there's so many different reasons for, for why people might be moving here. Yeah. Yeah. And, every, and it's a personal decision, of course, but I can think like, I remember kind of this silver tsunami idea has been around for a little while. And yeah, the age, I mean, um, America is an aging population overall, but seeing where particularly the huge generation, the baby boomers are choosing to move to uh, live their best life in their retirement years and have access to things like health care. Maybe they're outdoorsy and they're excited to be able to go birding and hiking and stuff when they couldn't before where they were living or didn't have time for. There's a lot of reasons why it could be attractive. But then on the flip side, why is it not so attractive anymore for young families or for people who would want to have kids in the Treasure Valley? The increased demand for housing, for instance, it pushes prices up. You know, we have a housing shortage here in Boise in particular. You know, I don't remember the exact numbers, but they're expected to build like 2,000 homes per year or something like that. Right. To keep up with demand over the next 10 years. Which isn't really keeping up with demand. It's just trying to play catch up essentially, right? Right. (laughs) Yeah. 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 But but housing prices have been increasing and increasing. You know, if if you're a young family just just starting out and you want to buy a house, and it costs four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars just for a one or two bedroom house. It makes it really restrictive. And so, yeah. w- w- with that in mind, maybe people are waiting longer to have kids. Um, you know, once you get married, you you have your mortgage. Once you're in a more financially secure place, then you can have a kid. And that's kind of this concept that's been going around for a bit. And we are seeing that that you know people are waiting longer to have kids, which could play a role in in why enrollment numbers aren't as big as they used to be, really. Yeah, declining birth rates. We're seeing that throughout Idaho and Ada County, um, and there might be some other political reasons for that to be happening. But I wonder too. So Nampa um, is definitely experiencing this in a big way, as you mentioned. The actual school uh, schools that are closing um, because of this low enrollment. Is this also happening in the Boise School District too? It sounds like it is, but maybe not quite as severely yet. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the most interesting stats that I found while researching this this story was that that Boise's population grew by over 61,000 people between 2000 and 2023. But in that same time period, the Boise School District has lost over 4,000 students. Wow. So 60,000 more people in Boise, but actually lost students in that same time period. That's remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't say 4,000 students is like an insignificant number. Like, I feel like that's a pretty, yeah. that's a pretty large number. So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 4,000 students fills up a couple schools. I mean, like that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of, lots, lots of classrooms, lots of um, desks. So I wonder, I wonder what is the impact of this? Maybe let's start with the impact on schools and how different districts are adapting. Are they, I mean, if schools are closing, then uh, some people are losing their jobs, right? Um, what, what does this mean on the school side of things? Enrollment and attendance plays a really big role in funding. You know, if, if you lose students, you lose funding. And that affects basically all parts of a school district. Right. Superintendents and school districts really have to grapple with this and kind of weigh what's, what they can do to address these shortfalls at the same time as still providing everyone with the education they need. Right. So, for instance... Do they have to cut the number of bus routes out there, which could save money, but it also might force kids to to walk farther to school or or to bikes to school or or find other means? Does it mean you have to cut a language program? 
even though it might be really beneficial to folks. So in, in Nampa, I think that's the most drastic example. They couldn't afford to keep these schools open, even though many of the facilities were perfectly fine. Um, and so they, they chose to instead close or repurpose four of the schools, which, which I think was a pretty dramatic move. Okay, so yeah, thinking about just like these literal geographic shifts and where people are moving to and how old those people are and the demographic shift that overlays it. Has there been any effort for like school districts and developers or like city leaders to say, hey, we're seeing our school enrollment go down. Uh, could you build some homes near our school districts so that we can have like some more families move in nearby? Is that a thing that's possible? Sort of. So, yeah, in the Nampa School District, uh, again, they were really hoping that developers would build more on the southern and eastern parts of the city. And then more kids would move in and then they'd have, you know, a, a more steady enrollment number from those new building projects and those new homes. Right. Because in theory, like, yeah, like single family homes that are that are affordable for these families to be attracted to. Right. Yeah. But really, that's not that's not something they've seen that developers have been super interested in. Hmm. Instead, developers are building on the on the western and northwestern parts of, of Nampa which fall within the, the Valley View School District, which, which has seen pretty significant pop enrollment growth. And so basically, NAMP is losing students to Valley View as they build more within the Valley View School District. And Valley View has actually like gone on record to like city council to, to say, like, let's slow down on, on building like homes near our schools because their schools are getting overloaded. Wow. Which is kind of interesting to see that these two like neighboring school districts, you know, one is struggling with using basically temporary buildings for to have classrooms. Because they're so overloaded. Right? Because they're yeah. so overloaded. And then Nampa School District is being forced to close schools because they don't have enough students. Um, so like you can you can ask for, for things you can you can kind of push to have development put in a certain way. But from what I was told about Valley View School District is even if a school district is like opposed to a development, the city council can't really, they can take that into consideration, but they can't deny it if the school's overloaded. Mm, interesting. Which I think is just a really interesting point. Yeah, yeah. You'd think that there could be some more like city planning around this to, to encourage, but um, that's fascinating. So I'm thinking too just about just in general, this, this aging population uh, where folks who are retiring and getting older are moving and living um, and maybe they're, yeah, again, living their best life in their 60s and 70s and hopefully will be vital for a long time. But it's an aging population. So I'm just like even backing out from the school issue, thinking about what this means for the Treasure Valley in the future, you know, healthcare jobs are probably going to be highly in demand. They already are in demand and probably will be even more so. Who's going to take care of all these people as they get older? I mean, yeah, it feels like you've really hit on a, a topic that certainly the the education piece, the public schools piece of this is massive, but there's other, other, other threads here for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, an aging population, it affects basically all aspects of our society. I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad. Um, it's just, it, it is a way of, of things, you know, there's, there's certain good things, there's certain bad things about, about an aging population, but it does change things as, as you age. So yeah, for, for instance, maybe that means more, more folks needing physical therapy, which means maybe you need more doctors for physical therapy. Which means maybe more PTs have a good opportunity for great jobs in Boise. Or something. Which, yeah, yeah, which would be great. But yeah. also at yeah. the same time that maybe there's not enough PT people around sure. to provide that service. Sure. Um, so yeah, it, it strains different parts of, of society and, and different sectors in, in different ways. And I, that's kind of everyone's facing that. Demographics is not a steady thing. It's always changing. Yeah. So it's just one of those things to, to think about and to, to consider when, when you're looking at these kinds of things. Where are these students going? The students that are leaving these schools, is it that they're moving to different public school districts or they're moving out of state? Where, where are they headed? So one of the things that I was thinking about when, when I was working on the story and I talked with my editor about a lot was that maybe maybe kids are just, you know, leaving the public school system to go to, to private schools, to, to homeschool or, or other types of schools where, you know, enrollment isn't tracked and, and publicly available. Right. And that is playing a role. 
it's definitely been playing a role since the the pandemic. And and another kind of another data set that I pulled um, was the number of charter schools, alternative schools, magnet schools, and online schools okay. in Idaho. Um, and and over the years, and and we did see a, a, an increase in in those alternative types of schools as well. Hmm. So in 2019, 2020, I believe there was only four online districts. And then that number has risen to 23 um, in the 23-24 school year. Hmm. So pretty big jump up. Yeah. And of course, you aren't able to get public data on private school uh, enrollment increases. But no. um, but yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen a little uh, some stories here and there about some private schools that have been able to expand or, you know, looking to, to have capital campaigns to grow. So there might be yeah. some indications there. And I, I will note as well that there's no data available for homeschooled students right there's no test scores there's no withdrawal numbers hmm. so that's kind of a that's kind of just a a black box we're not we're not entirely sure how many homeschooled students there are gotcha okay Nick so you've you've laid out these places where uh, the population is aging and school enrollment is going down are there any kind of bright spots I guess for people who are wondering like well where is enrollment going up w- where can we look to for that? Yeah. So if you're looking historically at things, there's a couple of school districts that have increased in, in school populations or school enrollments. So for instance, the West Data School District since 2000 has has seen a pretty significant increase in, in school enrollment. One reason like for that could be, you know, there's, there's more land to build homes in West Data than in Boise, sure. for instance. And then also the Valley View School District has, has also seen a, a pretty significant increase and and that kind of goes back to the whole question of or the whole topic about developers being more interested in building on the on the western and, and northwestern parts of Nampa and and then also between Nampa and Caldwell and that kind of little space that Valabu's in. Um, so yes, there there is there is some schools districts that have seen enrollment gains over the last twenty years or so, but for most school districts with enrollments over a thousand students, since the pandemic, enrollment numbers have decreased. Hmm. This is so fascinating. I could talk to you about this forever. I feel like there's so many more threads to pull. So thank you so much for coming on and going in depth on your reporting and for covering this story. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to be here. Thanks. All right, that's all for today here on CityCast Boise. The city's still all about word of mouth. So if you're a fan of the show, tell a friend about us. We'll be back tomorrow morning with our Friday News Roundup. See you then.